Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, it's, it's really my pleasure to be here. Um, this is such an exciting conference. Um, I feel like I've, my knowledge of technology has sort of grown exponentially in just one day. And um, I just, it's really exciting to me to learn about all of the um, advances and how we can, in technology, and how we can kind of really harness that to reach youth and have a real impact. Um, so thanks, Andy, for your uh, introduction. Um, that's my uh, sort of intro slide. But this this slide just sort of wanted to talk just really briefly about NIMH, which is um, one of the institutes at, at the National Institutes of Health, and sort of our research priorities, um, which focus on sort of developing um, innovative, um, multidisciplinary HIV prevention research. Um, uh, Sort of also developing sort of multi-level um, prevention efforts. I think we all know from the last 25 years you can't just intervene in one way on one level um, and expect to have an impact, but you really have to approach um, the epidemic um, in, in multi multiple contexts um, and on multiple levels in terms of the individual, couple, family, um, and society um, more broadly. This is a little busy, but um, I just wanted to show this slide to sort of show you the different branches or the different areas of research that the Center for Mental Health Research on AIDS, um, the areas that uh, we support. So there are three basic branches. Um, there's the basic and clinical neuro AIDS branch, and don't ask me very many questions about this branch because completely over my head. <laughs> it's uh, uh, looking at, um, you know, the neuropathophysiology of HIV infection on the brain, and um, also lots of basic uh, neuroscience going on in that branch. Um, then there's the primary prevention branch, which I'm a member of. Um, so uh, this branch is, uh, yeah, look, looking at you know what are who are the you know who are individuals that are at high risk for HIV, and then what factors kind of put them at risk, and what are the protective factors. Um, what are you know um, <clears throat> some of the res resiliency um, factors, um, <clears throat> and then how do we intervene to be able to reduce um, individuals' risk? Um, and then the third branch is a look at uh, funding research with individuals who have HIV. So looking at how do you reduce um, secondary, um, uh, how do you increase secondary prevention among HIV positive individuals? Um, looking at issues around adherence, and taking medications every day is, gets old very, very fast, and how do you, um, how, how people kind of maintain that motivation, um, as well as looking at um, research around implementation and dissemination, and this is sort of a new area for us. Um, a lot of times we've been involved with <clears throat> developing new programs for HIV prevention, but I think <clears throat> As we all know, there are so many great programs out there already, but why then are they not um, rolled out? Or when they are rolled out, why are there sometimes issues? Or, you know, so this sort of area of research looks at, you know, what are some of the organizational factors that might um, have an impact on the effectiveness of interventions when they're rolled out to the community and they're not being done in this very, you know, s strictly, um, monitored uh, research study. And then there are a couple cross-cutting programs. Um, NIMH funds some uh, research centers. There's one um, here in San Francisco, one in LA. Um, there's quite a bit of international research that we fund. Um, there's some training, help to Anyway, so uh, I thought I'd just talk for a couple of slides about different grant funding applications. Um, there's a huge range. You get on the NIH website and it becomes very quickly overwhelming. Um, so this slide just sort of goes over some of the base, you know, some of the four sort of key areas. Um, there's pre-doctoral and postdoctoral fellowships. There's um, career development awards, which is K's. The R's, which are research grants. And then there's also small business grants. Um, so I'm gonna talk, um, and, Again, these are just some of the smaller um, research grants, but I wanted just to take a second longer to talk about R21s, because I think knowing um, 
sort of knowing what these types of applications are looking for, what, what the call for these types of applications is really looking for innovative research ideas. Um, it's, it's two years, you can think a little bit outside the box, you don't need pilot data, um, you know, you need to show that you've really thought, you know, things through and that you've got a good theoretical model um, and that um, you've got a well thought out research plan. Um, but it, it can be a little more um, risky. Um, so it could be using a technology to assess, assess risk in youth. Um, someone did a study looking at uh, PDAs and giving it to kids and having them uh, respond and enter in their data about their mood and about their sexual risk and their sexual behavior over a two week time period. Um, and Initially, the reviewers saw that application and thought, there's no way the kids are going to lose them, and it's not going to work, they're not going to answer when they get deep to you know, respond. And, and what happened, they did it. And it was great. And, and there's so much great data about um, affect management and sexual <coughs> risk and so how those two play out in the lives of adolescents and their, and their relationships. So those are our 21s. And then um, the dollar amount is $275,000 over the course of two years. Yes. Um, these are our ones. These are sort of the, the, everyone calls them the bread and butter of that age. But anyway, they're, they're large studies. They're quite competitive. Um, anyway, I just wanted to post that. Um, the other one, the other grant um, uh, mechanism that I think that may be applicable to people in this audience are the SBIR STTRs. Um, so Congress had this great idea that you know we want to we want to fund more, more small businesses to be doing research um, and developing innovative technologies. Um, so they set aside a percentage of the NIH budget purely to fund this type of work. Um, basically, um, while well, they're very similar, um, but the the investigator has to be at a small business, which is like less than 500 people, um, has to be US owned, um, and you have to be developing a technology that potentially has some commercial viability. Um, there are sort of six months to a year for your phase one, and you can kind of develop that technology, <clears throat> and then you come back in and you apply for the phase two period of funding, which is uh, two or more years, um, and that's during the time when you really test it out and you develop a commercial plan for your product or your technology. Um, <clears throat> I think the real, the key here for <clears throat> the small business grants is to develop um, good partnerships. Um, I think um, the NIH process is not simple, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and so it's great to be able to partner with a researcher who has gone through um, the, the application process. So if you're a small business owner, it's, it's great to be able to partner with someone at a university that um, you know and you trust and you can work collaboratively as a team um, to develop uh, an application. So, because I'm shameless and not very innovative, I'm going to give you my top five points to take away from this talk. Um, and I couldn't even figure out how to make it come in one at a time. Anyway, <laughs> I'm pathetic. Okay, so. Number five, NIMH funds research focusing on HIV prevention among youth. Number four, the R21 funding mechanism specifically requests applications um, to develop new innovative research ideas. Number three, SBIR, STTR grants are focused on developing innovative, commercially viable technologies. Number two, develop good partnerships. And I think this is true, I, I mentioned it around the SBIR, STTRs, but I think this is also true for the R21s. Um, uh, if you, you know, if you're a community organization and you're doing something really innovative and cool to reach youth and you really feel like it's having an impact, you know, and you want to be able to evaluate that and get that information out in a different forum, you know, the, the research of the world, um, you know, developing partnerships with the researchers who are interested in this type of work, I think, can be really valuable. And one, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email a program officer at NIH. That is what we are here for. That's, um, that's what they pay us um, to do. So 
Perfect